We received our sample and I just confirmed the ID with the board and it looks good. So now I pour the blood out of the blood bag into tubes so that we could spin it and get plasma, which is the liquid of blood. So this blood bag is 200 ml. Our typical blood bags will be 150. So now it goes on its first spin. RPM, everything is basically spinning at 1800, um, which is relatively slow. It's not really, it's at a speed that won't squish the cells, it'll just make them separate by weight as gently as possible. The time we use brakes is when we're trying to pellet the cells that we've collected. This is a sample that just finished its first spin, which is what we put the earlier sample on. And you can see all the cells are on the bottom, while the plasma, the liquid component of blood, is at the top. It is added nutrients for to keep all the cells healthy. And what I'm gonna do is add our PMI back to the samples to dilute it back to its original volume, just so that it's a good viscosity to layer over if I call. And want to isolate the white blood cells from the red blood cells and with this media the red blood cells will fall to the bottom and leave the white blood cells at above the phycol and the reason we want to gently layer it is so that the red blood cells separate themselves out through gravity on their own if we broke the phycol layer meaning these two mixed then the white blood cells will get trapped underneath the phycol. Well, this is our troublemaker centrifuge. Gotta slam it. <laughs> this is a fully spun down phycol tube. You have your red blood cells at the bottom, the phycol media at the second layer, and then you have your layer of white blood cells, that cloudy bit right there at the 27 ml line. And then above that is the plasma and our PMI. And what I'm gonna do is carefully take out the layer of white blood cells and I'll see that. Okay. And put that into a new tube. When we do this step, we want to get as little of the phycol as possible because that will eventually kill the cells.
we won't know how many cells we actually have until we count it, but I've pulled off about 45 ml in total. But that is still a mixture of some RPMI and some thicol. So what I'm gonna do is dilute it with more RPMI. And what the next spin is gonna do is pull all the cells down to the bottom of the tube and leave the media on top. And we're gonna pour off that media and switch it with fresh RPMIs. So that is considered, that's called a rinse and that's gonna get rid of any remaining call in these tubes. The whole process will depend on the volume we start with, but it typically takes around three hours to three and a half hours. Most of the time is due to waiting on the centrifuge though. After spin three, you have your cells on the bottom and all the media, which is mostly RPMI, but there's a bit of glycol. So this is coming off of spin three. We rinsed our cells and we pelleted them on the bottom with the centrifuging and the harsh bricks. So you can see all of our cells on the bottom here. And all this media is a mixture of RPMI and glycol. What we're gonna do is pour off the media and replace it with fresh RPMI. We're also going to combine the pellets into one two to make our final product of PVMCs for this one sample. So all I do is directly shoot media at the bottom to loosen it up and keep going up and down just to homogenize the whole pellet. the other two just to make sure we got every last cell out. Just rinse down the sides. And that goes into the final two. And now we want to bring the volume up to 50 ml. We want a known volume so we could calculate the concentration later, or the cell total from the concentration. So this is our final tube of PBMCs resuspended in fresh RPMI. We want to know how many cells we have now, so I'm going to pull a small sample into this tray for counting.
now we're gonna go to the counting station. So this is a dye called Tripan Blue. It will give a dark blue background to our cells and it will also color any cells that are dead a deep blue. So I'll mix that with our sample and load it onto the hemocytometer. It's a tray for counting. I don't know if you could pick it up, but you could see very tiny etched lines on the silver part. Okay. There's a way to calculate how many cells are in a square on one of those grids and go from that count to concentration. It's a lot of math that I just learned the shortcuts for. <laughs> So, load that, it's on, give the cells a second to settle down, they're still suspended in the liquid a bit. I am counting, oh. <laughs> every time I see a cell I tap it so I don't have to remember the number. So right there on that line is one of the cells that I would count. That's a PBMC. So that's one of the 56 that I counted earlier. And just go in this 4x4 four four grid and count everything in there. And this 4x4 four four grid is part of a bigger 5x5. Five five. So we go to the other corner of that 5x5 five five and count all 16. So we count each corner and the center, and that gives us a total of 56 cells. You can see in the center, that one on the left, I would count. And that small smudge to the, the right, I would not. So one is either a red blood cell or platelet. Can't really see it that well. And then the other one is probably just cell debris or fat. It's slightly dyed blue. It could be a very wonky dead cell. Yeah, so those I would not count. So I've set this up to calculate it for me. This is, I'll get it to the side. This is our cell total. How many vials we need to freeze in and the density it'll be frozen at. So we've got our sample IDs. The first four is unique to the patient. The letter code is gonna be indicating what study they're in. This one is called Spitfire. And then the last number is how many times they've come in to visit. Then on our second row is what type of sample this is. So we have saliva samples for later. Serum is similar to plasma, except it doesn't have um, any clotting proteins. Then all of our plasma labels are on the tubes. I feel like I picked it up from the previous tech, but it also just makes the most sense. So I could just get everything off the sheet at once, rather than going from sheet to tube and that. Then I prefer to put one on each finger just because it's faster. I don't know, maybe one day we'll have a race and see whose method is better. <laughs> so after we've counted the sample, we're gonna spin it down and you'll see that it's turned into a pellet once again. What we're gonna do is vacuum off 
all the extra media and replace the media with this FBS, which will keep the cells safe as they freeze down to minus 80 degrees. into the freezer. All right, so that's the end of the sample.